Hello class, my name is Thompson. I'm a trainer at Lubavu Technical College Tivet, and today we are going to learn together the module which is called Decoder Repair. And today's topic, we are going to see together how to prepare a decoder for repairing and how to repair a decoder power supply. At the end of this session, each learner will be able to select and arrange different tools, materials, and equipment required for decoder repairing. He, she will be able also know how to repair a decoder power supply. As we are learning together, I invite you to take some notes and do a small practical with me as we are learning together. Firstly, you may ask yourself, what is a decoder? The decoding of a message is how an audience member is able to understand and interpret a message or a process of interpretation and translation of coded information into comprehensible form. Firstly, when you want to repair a decoder, you have to prepare the workplace accordingly. As a professional technician, as you already know, what you have to do, you have to select PPE which is personal protective equipment meant to protect you against any hazard while you are doing any kind of repairing. And after that, when you finish to select PPE, for example, you may take gloves to protect your hands, noise masks, and so on. When you finish to select the PPE, what you have to do next is to select tools materials and equipment required while repairing a decoder. Firstly, I have to select a universal screwdrivers which help me while doing assembling and disassembling. A flat screwdrivers, allen keys, screwdriving machine, universal pliers, cutting pliers, stripping pliers, blower, soldering iron, desoldering pump, digital multimeter, cleaning brush, soldering station, magnifying grass, and gun grew sticks. Finish to see tools, materials, and equipment required for decoder repairing. Now we are going to see the main part of a decoder. Before we see the main part of a decoder, we are going to learn about assembling and disassembling. Assembling is to fix together separated pieces in order to form one wall. Why disassembling is to break down or to separate one device into many pieces, as you can see at your own screen. As we are learning together, I hope you are doing a practical exercise with me as we are learning together. And now we are going to see the main part of a decoder. We start by external parts. As you can see, the external part of a decoder, there is a cover this one, which is used to protect the internal component. There is a volume control, which is used to adjust the volume. There is a power inlet, which is used to supply AC current to the power supply. There is an audio video inlet and outlet system, such as a USB ports, and some decoder has HDMI port and SD slots. After we finish to see the external part of our decoder, by the use of a screwdrivers, we are going to unscrew the screw which holds the cover of this decoder in order to reach the internal parts. As you can see, there are two main internal parts of a decoder. There is a DC power supply, which is used to convert alternative current, which is came from our home socket, into direct current, which is required by the internal component to work properly. And also, there is a control mode, as you can see at your own screen, which is act like a brain of this decoder because it's used to execute all command given by the user. And now we are going to see how to repair a decoder power supply. Firstly, we have to know the general faults that occur in decoder power supply and the diagnostic techniques. For example, there's a blown up fuse. When the fuse is blown up, as you already know that it's used for protection, in that way, there is no current flow through our circuit. There is a blown up chopper transformer, there is a blown up main capacitor, there is a blown up rectifier, 
And finally, there is a brown up regulator. While one of those components is brown up, as you already know, you replace defected component according to the corresponding component. Firstly, you remind yourself about soldering and soldering different component of the power supply of a decoder and the replacement of defected component by the corresponding component. For example, this main capacitor, when it's grown up, as you can see at your own screen, by the use of a digital multimeter, why we found out that it's grown up, we have to replace it according to the corresponding capacitor. As you can see at your own screen, you do it slowly and carefully, and you remind yourself about soldering and soldering. As you can see, and after when you finish to replace defected component according to the corresponding component, you do what is called conduct after repair testing. Why you do a voltage measurement at different stage of the decoder power supply. The chopper transformer, as you can see at your own screen, you measure the rectifier to see if it's responding correctly. The filter, as you can see, the main capacitor, we are doing a voltage measurement in order to see if it's working accordingly. And finally, we do a voltage measurement at the regulator. While you finish to do a voltage measurement, now you conclude that you finish to replace defected component of this power supply circuit. And after all, while you accomplish the task to repair a power supply of this decoder, you do what is called assembling, which is to fix together separated pieces in order to form one wall. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Our next session, we will see how to replace a control module of a decoder. As I told you before, I hope you are taking some notes and doing a practical exercise with me as we are running together. See you next time. <laughs>